All right, guys, welcome back for part four or technically part 14 if you're following the whole guide for Sentinel. But in terms of the end game for part four, what you really want to do is just keep on doing your maps. At this point, I've done all of the maps, so obviously this build is capable of doing any of the maps. There are some unique maps. We'll talk more about that later. But for the most part, your whole goal is just to try to do every single map and do the bonus of every single map so you can get the Atlas. Now, in terms of the Atlas tree, don't worry about copying mine exactly. It all kind of depends on your playstyle whether you like to engage in certain mechanics or not. For me, I like to be very, very fast as I progress. I start making it so I'm only trying to do one thing because in the very beginning, a lot of times people like to test out for this league, is this mechanic good? Is the drops going to be good? Is there a new reward on this particular map? There's so many things to factor this in. So if you're watching this, maybe at a later time, things definitely change. So don't feel like you have to copy it, but you basically just want the points to put in so you can actually benefit off of the Atlas tree. So again, your goal is just to keep on doing maps and you just keep on grinding. Eventually, we'll talk more about these watchstones, but for the most part, it's all about just keep on doing maps and getting upgrades for your character. So I'm gonna actually explain a few newer things for this part of the video, but uh, first off, I do wanna mention that you're gonna be wanting to get things called cluster drills, and I'll kinda show you how that works in a second. But just for some sort of reference, just in case any of you guys want to buy some items, and again, just keep on doing maps, get your currency up, and you just start trading for items. So for most summoners, they're gonna be wanting something called Flesh Crafter. Um, I've already talked about this before, um, but it pretty much comes down to getting one of these and ideally getting this six linked or get any weapon, get it six linked. And if you, you have to, you can run a six link two handed staff in the very beginning, but usually you want to have a shield to get like recover percentage life when you block. But this is excellent for most summoner builds. Um, you also want to get Dead Reckoning. This is a jewel that allows you to have the skeletons. And I'll kind of show you how that works in a second. But because I want this to be an end game guide for a lot of different builds, these are just really good uniques uh, that you can get early on that are going to significantly increase your power that are relatively cheap. So at the moment, um, Hiri's Ire is great. Um, it's only like 5 Chaos Orbs. It gives you a huge amount of damage to bow attacks. It's excellent for also granting you the ability to get suppression on spell damage. So if you are playing like a ranged bow character, this is an excellent item as well that's relatively cheap. Um, another good thing is just to look for any six link with these stats in particular, because everyone can benefit off of having life and max life um, percentage. So you can get these relatively cheap. You can see that there's like 20 chaos orbs for this one over here. Um, this one's 30 chaos orbs and it's got an additional seven elemental resistance to everything. So just check in here, check, check in also what you're going for. Maybe you're stacking armor, evasion, whatever the case you may be going for. As the time progresses in the league, a lot of these will get cheaper and cheaper because people will get really, really good items. But it doesn't have to be unique. I just figured I'd show some uniques. Um, if you are dealing fire damage and you are lacking life in the very beginning, now this item doesn't have any sockets, but it's really great for anyone that's really using like two-handed weapons. Two-handed weapons for six links are generally pretty cheap depending on the weapon, but uh, you can get a pretty cheap six link um, weapon and then just get a KO and your survivability will go up a huge amount because this gives you 500 life. It's an excellent item. It's kind of been outclassed, but I'm just giving you guys some ideas for references. Now, another thing I want to talk about in this video is cluster jewels. These are very important for most builds. There's always going to be cluster jewels for like the top tier of like min-maxing. And I'll kind of show you how it works is essentially adding things that are on the skill tree to the skill tree but in addition to that yeah just start trading your items uh you can trade your um items uh that are currency for other items as well um you can actually get your stuff to six socket yourself and then you can try to six link it um i actually happened to do that with the armor that i have which is the flesh crafter but let's say you don't need certain currency uh, over on the Path of Exile official trade website. And I actually recommend a lot of you guys use the official website. The reason why is right now on some of the other third party sites, some of them are kind of behind. Sometimes there's just too many uh, traffics going on in the very beginning of the league. And it can kind of just cause things to show up that they actually shouldn't. So just use the official trade website. That's pathofexile.com slash trade. But uh, what we're going to do is we're going to click on bulk item exchange. What it's really good for is let's say I have a bunch of jeweler's orbs and I want um, chaos orbs because I want to go ahead and trade for some of these items I've mentioned, right? So all I would do is just click on the bulk item exchange and just hit search. And if you want to have like minimum stock as in like you only want to be able to trade, let's say like for, for 50, um, it'll show at least the person happens to have, let's say 50 of whatever you're going for, if that makes sense. So this is a really easy way. And just like before, if you want to contact them, all you have to do is 
contact, copy and paste it, and then um, you'll be good to go. So like if I was to copy this, I'd go here, and then I'd hit enter, they'd send me an invite, and we'd go to their hideout, and we would trade. Um, but always make sure the item is correct. Sometimes uh, people give you the wrong item on accident. Most people aren't really out here to scam, but there are scammers out there, so just be aware of that. So basically, if you don't have them to have the currency, you probably picked up a lot of these other uh, forms of currency, which uh, can be kind of transferred into other currencies. Uh, but at this point, we're way further along. I'm gonna show you guys uh, gameplay uh, in just a moment that's like a little bit uh, more so for like, um, the progression but at this point i've gotten really really good gear and i feel like i can actually talk about this a little bit better and there's a few things i want to mention on the atlas tree so remember when you're doing the bonuses for maps you're going to be able to get those points now in the very beginning um i actually think this is still a very valid strategy if you want to um once you happen to have the eaters of worlds as you start progressing on the map you'll just end up talking to some uh, people on maps and you'll be able to unlock being able to do the advancing closer to the eater of worlds or the searing x arch doesn't really matter which one these can be very very good in the very beginning because certain items are worth a lot now the items that can drop are still worth a lot like the chase items that's crystallized omniscience as well as ashes of the stars However, the currency is still very good for crafting early on, and I actually do like to do that. I actually specced into these these two nodes early on, and then I just start farming these because Maven is a little bit more challenging, but if you want to, you can spec into that. I usually go into this, get a bunch of the currency, start crafting some items, and we'll talk about that uh, very soon because every build, regardless if you're playing summon or not, will be able to benefit from uh, these uh, little like e-cores because what they can do is grant you specifically, like on my boots over here, I have drop spittle ground while moving that's going to give you increased base crit chance um, which is useful for every single build unless you don't crit which is very very rare but we'll talk also more about gem upgrades uh, in a moment here and I'll just I'll just kind of cut to that uh, but uh, start upgrading your flash start upgrading your gems and we'll talk more about that but I need to tell you guys how cluster jewels work as well as going over at the anime guardian because uh, most builds can benefit off of Anime Guardian, and some builds can actually still use Summon Spectre uh, or Raise Spectre because it's going to give you Power and Frenzy Chargers, which are excellent for output on damage. But in our case, since we're playing a Summoner, it buffs us and the minions, but mostly the minions are what's going to deal the damage anyways. So, first off, Cluster Jewels. There are a ton of Cluster Jewels in the game. To actually search for these, um, they're a little bit... Uh, different um because you don't just type in like cluster jewel like for example let me go ahead and bring up the path fix i'll trade website so instead of just typing in like cluster jewel like in the item category you just type in cluster jewel right but they have all of these little special stat filters that you're looking for like uh, one of them is like blessed rebirth that we want so we would type in like uh just type in blessed and it'll type in the rest of it we want one of these the one that we're actually looking for is specifically a cluster jewel that has both of these if you want to like kind of copy this feel free to do so you, if you're playing the summoner build we'll talk more about like other builds in a second because i want to be able to cover everything but going into uh blessed rebirth and uh life from death is kind of what you want earlier on these are about 35 chaos you can see one for 50 they're kind of a little bit pricey but again this is just getting you guys set up if you can't afford them earlier on it's no problem you just keep that in the back of your mind because i'm just showing you guys kind of the mechanics and in order to really increase your dps and path of exile you kind of want that but also, don't forget about PoE.Ninja. There's lots of different builds. It's not just Necromancer that I want to cover. Let's say um, Champion's a very, very good cl uh, class. Well, at least as of right now, and it's been really, really powerful for a long time. So let's say uh, I'm looking at like Lightning Strike, right? Let's, let's, let's say that that's my build. Um, I usually click on either DPS um, or Depth to see like how far these characters have progressed. But keep in mind with DPS, sometimes people will have very low HP and they just want the numbers to show up. So like anything that isn't like uh, at least maybe let's say like 5,000 life or some people are going pretty low in life. Let's, let's look at this one that's like 5,000 life. It has 1.9 million DPS. Look at what cluster jewels they're running. Okay, this one just happens to be not running. Most builds, okay. Let's, let's click on this one. This one I was also not running it. Okay, uh, maybe, maybe some people aren't running it uh, with this build in particular. Okay, there's a cluster jewel right here. So this cluster jewel over here, it says uh, one added passive is feed the fury, fuel the fight, martial prowess. What do those exactly do? You can uh, go over on uh, Google and just Google like feed the fury and just see what it does. You can go to, like PoE wiki 
and then type in like whatever, one added passive skill is whatever, right? Um, but if you get the cluster jewel, and you'll get these from doing delirium mechanics, but you can also get these as other drops as you progress in the game. But these are very powerful and you have to know how these work. So for example, this one over here says, um, added passive skill is furious assault. So that's what this would do. Now, what's interesting with this is it's going to activate a skill that's not even on our skill tree. It's kind of like a secret skill. So what I can do, if I wanted to modify this, let's say for example, I wanna go ahead and alk this. Now we have Iron Breaker. So you can roll new skills in the skill passive tree that normally aren't here. Let's go ahead and actually show how it works. So in order to get a cluster jewel on our passive tree, we actually have to put the cluster jewel inside. Now, in this instance, I have another jewel that extends the tree even further. You can make these go pretty far out. You can go large, medium, then small um, in terms of the cluster jewels. But in order to remove this, I'm gonna to have to actually spend one point and it's gonna go ahead and do that. So you'll see that over here, we have a large jewel socket. I can put in any jewel that would normally go in just like anywhere else on the tree, right? However, um, in this instance over here, the cluster jewel will actually add more, but I will actually have to put in the points in order for these to actually go through. This is the one that adds, um, where is it? Iron Breaker. So Iron Breaker is over here. Now, depending on the number of um, added passives, this can matter. Sometimes you want less. Sometimes you want more. It depends on kind of what you are trying to go for. But I could technically put points into here, then put this one in and it would extend it even further. But I don't really need Iron Breaker. I mean, um, I don't deal physical damage, so it's basically useless for us. But it basically extends your skill tree to have skills that, again, aren't on every skill tree. So in our case right here, we want the one, remember, Blessed Rebirth and also Life from Death. I could probably get a much better one. In fact, I will, but I want to keep this a little bit more simple because I don't want to give you guys large medium and, and buying all these at once can be kind of um, overwhelming. But the most important one that you want for our summoner build is definitely going to be Blessed Rebirth if you're doing skeleton majors because the minions can uh, created recently can't be damaged. So basically our skeletons are immune to damage for four seconds when they come out. So we put this one in over here. And you'll see that if I go over here, like if I if I just go ahead and put points, um, sometimes you can link, like sometimes the path will be bad. You'll have to put like a, what's called a worthless point. And usually the small ones are basically worthless points. Like for example, it, I want both of these, right? But I also want this. So if I was to path here, I would actually have to waste one skill point because I want Blessed Rebirth, right? So remember, pathing will matter uh, for sure, unless you really wanted 12% minion life. In our case, we don't can really care about that, the extra two cold res. You can re-roll some of these extra stats on them, uh, but for the most part, um, yeah, re-rolling some of these can be a little bit risky because you will lose some of the other stuff. I won't get into that right now. I don't want to really go into crafting because it's going to be a really long video if I do that, but we're just going to go ahead and put these points back in and then we'll put back in, let's say if I want to put a small drill sock, I can't do that because you have to go from large medium to small instead of just going from like small to large and then because otherwise the tree would extend infinitely which would be a cool idea but uh yeah you can't just infinitely go now the jewel socket that you get has to be a large jewel socket so i cannot just put in a cluster jewel in let's say like an area right here it just won't work if i put it in uh what will happen is let me go, actually let's see I'm just, okay uh, let's say i put it in here it won't work so it has to be a large jewel. So uh, the areas that have a large uh, jewel socket are all gonna be on the edge of the uh, passive skill tree, but that's how that works. But I also wanna go ahead and show you guys gem upgrades and more things in this video. So let me go ahead and actually, uh, I have some notes over here uh, for the video because this this one, while we're not really doing uh, any gameplay here, um, I wanted to go ahead and mention some of the things that are important. So um, in order to get a six link, you can actually do it yourself. Um, you can just RNG it. You can also use your currency just to sell. Now, you can also go to the crafting bench and just guarantee that you'll get like a six link. Like for example, let me see if I can find an armor that's like not six linked or like any piece. You can take a a any item that you want to and it'll tell you how much it will cost. You'll have to get the recipe or let's say like this bow, right? Let's say I really wanted this bow to have six sockets, six links. Um, you can go over and you can throw it in and it will tell you how much it will cost. So if I type in sockets, we can get 
Um, six sockets is going to cost 350 jewelers orb remember how i was saying you can pick up those six socketed items and it'll give you jewelers orbs so that is, that's a way to, to farm up jewelers orbs um if you want to get linked ones um i mean the six linked is 1500 it's actually a lot but that will guarantee it or you can just risk it like i did and honestly i got lucky that's how i got my six linked flesh crafter um i know right now we have a different skin applied over it but it's the same thing. It's Flesh Crafter. It's just you can apply other skins in the game. Um, but in terms of upgrades, here's kind of what I'm looking at right now. This is like way further along than what I'm about to show you. Like I'm going to go to gameplay very soon of like uh, like my progression as it was normally within like the time frame. Keep in mind, I've played this character. Let me go to like age on here. So, oh, it was created. Uh, I think it's uh, time played. Is it this one? Uh, or is it played? Okay, so we've played this character for two days, so 48 hours, and keep in mind the campaign, on average, it takes people about 10 hours uh, to do it, especially the first time, and while I'm doing like the full guide, it took me, that's what it took me about, but um, yeah, so that's kind of the time frame now, but when we first, first got to the end game, we were like, uh, I don't know, like maybe 13 hours in, so keep in mind, if you're watching this as a full walkthrough playthrough guide, you're just going to keep on needing to farm currency, so if you can't afford these things early on, don't worry about it. Um, so I actually craft this. We'll talk more about the crafting this one later, um, and I'll get more into crafting, but like, it's, it's a really, really hard thing to craft. You can buy this. This is like four exalts. I got mine for un like basically under one exalt. I got lucky. I crafted. I'm using the new mechanic. And again, I'll mention that a little bit more, but I'm trying to keep this video concise. Um, in terms of our gloves, we just got gloves that happen to have a nerve. I actually rolled that myself. I crafted these gloves myself we're gonna actually be crafting better ones in a moment and i'll talk more about that but pretty much just trying to get decks where you can life those are all great stats i got a ring this was a really cheap ring i paid literally one chaos orb for this um it has the ability to not be ignited you can also get that as an implicit on your belt um i like to get a, a immunity to ignite uh, really early on so yeah grabbing this is great this is great for all characters by the way even though some of this gear might be like summoner related i'll tell you guys the pieces of gear that like everyone can use everyone can always use life on like every single thing unless you're doing like chaos inoculation you're scaling energy shield but uh being immune to ignite is really good and then we have resistances as well as some life um in terms of our helm it's just got uh skeletons got increased damage that's the enchant mechanic i bought this then crafted it myself it was like basically free uh, got kind of lucky uh but i i crafted basically for free after i bought it and i just used essences which is something we'll talk about later down the line um amulet just have the death and uh, tuma uh, uh, anointment which we talked about in a previous video of how to anoint our items um the shield now this is important for almost all characters that are using anything that's like one-handed like you want to use like some offhand um like specifically a shield getting the recover percent life when you block it goes up to five that thing alone it will save you in the entirety of the game uh, especially when you once you scale block uh, at the end of the game we will have 100 percent uh of the maximum block which is actually 75 so 75 is max block you can technically increase it further but you i don't think you can get 100 percent block uh in the game but uh, 75 is like the the soft cap of it but you can increase it like two or three percent further but there's other things to do to increase it a little bit more but for the most part we're going to be max block which is uh 75 percent um and so basically every time we would get hit it uh just recovers our life it's excellent i recommend everyone to get this now the other modifier on this is socket and gems have increased reservation efficiency that can get kind of expensive i paid 50 chaos orbs for this that was kind of expensive uh, but i got kind of lucky too like i actually want evasion i'll talk more about the reason why i'm scaling evasion and armor um a lot of people will just kind of spec into one thing but specifically i guess i can mention it real quick doing expeditions as well as doing um um, the uh, the mechanic of like the little like ecor drops. There are things where it's like your uh, enemies overwhelm 100% of your physical damage reduction, and then that way, we, like scaling evasion and it and uh, armor makes it so you can roll those, and it doesn't really matter as much because otherwise you'll just die. Um, but yeah, uh, pretty much just getting life everywhere, get chaos resistance. You're really looking to max out all your resistances. As you guys can see over here, I have 75 into every single resistance. You'll see my chance to block how that works is I'm going to have to use my uh, buffs and then it goes to, we'll get that 1% up on the 74, but everything will be 75. Fire res is capped uh, at 75, but then we got something on the tree that gives us plus one. But uh, yeah, pretty much. Uh, oh, there's also uh, Darkness and Throne. This is a really cheap item. Most people can afford it. Uh, but then you can get some uh, uh, eye jewels, and then you can throw these eye jewels inside here. There's like a, a belt that has jewel sockets, but it has to be 
the eye jewels. You can't just throw in like the regular jewel sockets uh, over here. But yeah, this is a really cheap belt. It's like five chaos orbs. This is a very expensive thing. It can be a couple exalts. Flash Crafter that's six linked. Uh, that was the thing I was talking about before. Now, do you want to also mention that um, I got this myself. If you just have a five link, that's totally fine. But here's what I'm using for my main source of damage. Volley, Pierce, Awaken, uh, Minion Damage, but just run regular Minion Damage. Again, I've kind of progressed. I actually did Cirrus. Uh, no problem at all. I didn't happen to have the Awaken. In fact, the, the gear was much worse when I was doing this, but this is like where I'm at like at this moment of me recording this video. But you'll see the gameplay. Like I'm gonna have a much worse gear later down the line. I'm still running Summon Skeletons, Spell Echo, and then uh, increase Critical Damage Support. But don't worry too much about this until you get Spectres, which we'll talk about in just a moment here. So yeah, that's uh, kind of what I've done. Um, in terms of our buffs, uh, we are currently running Defiance Banner, Zealotry, Determination, Tempest Shield, and Grace. Uh, now, uh, for all builds, I would recommend either Determination or Grace. A lot of builds won't run double. I'm running double because I want to do a very specific thing. You can copy it if you want to, but you're going to have to get mana reservation on a lot of things, specifically on the helmet, which is easy to craft with Essence, which, again, uh, I'll talk more about crafting later. Again, I'm trying not to make this video too long, but sometimes it just happens with PoE. There's just so much content. Then I'm also doing De Defiance Mana and Zealotry. Um, so, yeah, we drop Skitterbots. Most builds will drop Skitterbots at some point. It's just a really good thing to have early on. Now, in terms of the passive tree, if you guys want to, like, kind of screenshot feel free to pause or whatever because you know that can happen uh there are some nodes that i took for reduced mana cost because uh, i had a lot of reservation right now i can only cast it once uh, but yeah that's kind of what the skill tree looks like at least for us now, uh, lots of builds can make use out of the Animate Guardian as well as the Spectres, and let me go ahead and show you guys how that works. So starting right off, I wanna show you the Spectres that you actually want for our build, but a lot of other builds can use these too. So let's go straight down over here. I'll get some lag. All right, so we we first off are gonna be obviously needing Ray Spectre. We are allowed to have four Spectres right now. Most people will probably have two or three earlier on, but you'll get four as you level it up and then get all of your increased like minion level gems. Um, but let's go ahead and go to Act 2, specifically the Riverway. So we're going to get, uh, if you only have three Spectres, just get two of one and one of the other one, uh, depending on the one you want. So these ones are going to grant you Frenzy Charges. What you're looking for are the monkeys. So you're looking for the big monkeys. So not these tiny ones. Let's find the big monkey. Let's see, let's see if I can find one for you guys. Sometimes though, our minions will kill things very fast. But if you see those little like green and blue orbs around our minions, okay, there's probably gonna be one right here. That's the big one. You okay, gotta find them. Sometimes, you know, it, it takes a little bit just to find them and that's okay, it's not a big deal. Uh, but you can also cast Desecrate to spawn them in uh, if you want to, but I wanna show you guys exactly what the heck they look like, but it's just taking this time. Okay, here we go. No? Where are these monkeys hiding? All right, here we go. You see how he dies really fast. Well, this is like a really low level area, but okay, here's one right here. You see how he's doing that ability? And then you see those green orbs? You wanna hold, the, the default key is, I believe, A, but if we go to um, input, what we're looking for specifically is enable corpse targeting, and mine is for A. So if I hold down the A key, you'll see at the top, it says what it is. We want the uh, Sigian Silverback. So one to two of these, and then we can get one to two of the uh, host chieftains. So we're gonna leave this area. So normally I would just, uh, I would activate it on it. So just right click, activate race specter on it. And then we're gonna go to the other area for the other one for the host chieftain, which is gonna be in part two, act six, the southern force. So we're looking for host chieftain. This is gonna give us the little blue orbs. So what the blue orbs do is give us crit. Now there's one right here. Here we go, host chieftain. Oh, he died really fast, but. Let me see if I can get a better angle so you guys can actually see him. So he gives us the blue ones. The blue ones is crit chance. The green ones are going to be increased attack. So you can see if I mouse over, see the blue ones, uh, increased critical strength for each power charge they have. And then the frenzy charge over here is gaining increased damage, attack, and cast speed for each one that you have. We're going to uh, have... So we need to get two of each because we can have four and that's going to give our minion that ability now another really important thing to do is get a golem right now we are running stone golem originally we were running Charon golem that was to increase our damage but since we have now gone to skeletons we no longer want to scale um physical damage we actually only want elemental so you can go to lily roth if you've done the quest if not you can go purchase this gem you can go to trade get it over there and uh, you'll be able to uh, get um, whatever gem you want but in our case we want stone golem uh, 
because it's like the only one that really benefits us, which just gives, just gives us life regen. But uh, yeah, it's gonna pretty much. Uh, yeah, let, let me cut to uh, yeah some of the other stuff that I wanted to show you guys. I want to show you guys like gem upgrades, six linking. Like I got kind of lucky with mine and the animate guardian. Let me cut to that. All right, let's go ahead and show off how to upgrade the quality of gems. So you could just use one gem cutter's prism uh, on your gem, and what that will do is increase the uh, quality by one percent. However, you can increase it by 20% with just one gem with a level 20 gem. However, this will reset the level. So to kind of show you guys how this works, uh, we're gonna take uh, one of these gems, just for the sake of this, I'm just gonna do this so it's easier visually. So each one of these gems that's level 20, we want to also quality up. Now, certain ones won't really benefit from other ones as much. Um, I still wanna get everything personally, unless it's like, uh, something that doesn't matter. Like this one, minion move speed on Ray Spectre doesn't really matter that much, uh, especially since our Spectres aren't really doing the damage. Uh, Ray Zombie will increase the uh, movement speed and life of the zombie, and so that will kind of help out. It doesn't really matter for damage. Minion damage support is actually one of the bigger ones where you get 10% increased damage. Now, we'll reset the gem to level one, but we'll get max quality on it. It's the, the cheaper way to do it. Flame Dash gives us uh, cooldown recovery. Some of these are like right about to level up in terms of our gems, um, but Corrupted Gems, uh, we can't do this on, unfortunately. Uh, but yeah, as we start leveling up more gems uh, through time, we will also be able to get upgrades on all of these for the most part. Uh, there is one that I don't plan to get at all, which is the Tempest Shield one. That gives us extra chance to shock enemies and the amount of damage that it deals is so low from the shock that I would rather just have these skeletons just proc it anyways. But still, that'll be like one exception. But yeah, we just go to any vendor where we can sell items, put in your gem. So in this case, we have one, two, three, four, and then we're, actually we have five. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and get this. And we will go uh, to sell. So we have one, two, three, four, five. Then we have one, two, three, four, five. And just hover over it just to make sure because sometimes it may mess up. But you see, it's going to give us that 20% quality. I'm just going to go ahead and hit accept. And then we were going to get all of our gems back, but they're going to be level one. So we'll have to re-level some of these up, but they will be higher quality. Um, again, you can level them up one by one. And then you're going to re-level them all the way up, and then you can hit them with a Vault Orb if you want to risk it and to get a level 21 gem or a 23% quality gem. That's what you do. These are very expensive to just purchase, so this is like an easier, cheap way to do it. That's how you upgrade your gems. You're going to want to do this with basically all of your gems, especially, especially like your um, Absolution or, uh, in our case, our Summon Skeletons. All right, so instead of doing the GCP method of like leveling it all the way up, I'm just gonna go for it. We're gonna go put 20 in. Is it smart to do this? Absolutely not. But I just had them, so I'm not here. You know what, let's just go for it. What we're hoping to hit is either 23 quality or we can hit um, level 21. Nothing. Hey, we had 22 quality. There we go. Not, not, not necessarily like the best because you can get 23, but hey, an upgrade's an upgrade. Only, the only good thing we're gonna get off this is getting this to, to six links. So we got 61, let's go. We ain't stopping at five either, like uh, a six link or nothing. Come on, come on, oh, oh! Oh, oh, no, no way did we just do that, let's go! <laughs> oh my gosh, six linked it. Uh, so, okay, I guess, I guess we bought enough microtransactions. Oh, that not, if you guys wanna know how much this is worth right now, a six link flesh crafter, minimum five X. I don't care about the yes, it doesn't really matter. It's, okay, it's like four, 4x oh all right let's show off the animate guardian mechanic so what we'll do is we'll go to just any area that's outside because you can't throw items down in your um hideout so what we're going to need is an animate guardian that's sufficient level to equip items that requires up to whatever level now Keep in mind, when you do this earlier on, he will probably die um, just because his level might not be high enough, but he's a really great addition. Uh, I really like him once you specifically get the uh, jewel that has uh, life from death. When you resummon your skeletons, it kills the other ones and it counts them dying, so it gives the uh, extra life on minion death. 
So that's a kind of a point where you'd actually want to get it. So what the anime garden will actually do is provide buffs from the items to you. Now this is going to be the budget version of it. There's a more expensive version that we can run, but for the most part, this is going to be good for the most part for most players relatively earlier on. So Ambu's will cost about one chaos orb. Uh, Victoros Flight's about one chaos. This can be like two to three chaos orbs. This is about uh, two to three chaos orbs. This is like one to three. Um, but here's what we actually get out of them. So there's better armors and gloves for more like other things, but it's going to be a lot more expensive. There's also like Kingmaker, which is great, but these are like more expensive items. The cheap things that you're using right here that grant you a buff are going to be Victoros Flight because it grants increased movement speed for you and your allies. Leercast grants additional damage uh, for you and nearby allies. Uh, the Dying Breath also grants uh, increased uh, damage for nearby allies. This is just for survivability. This is also for survivability. He's almost like a secondary character that you can't equip stuff. Now, when he dies, though, he loses all of it. It doesn't drop. It just goes away. It's gone. It's basically deleted from the game. So he is kind of an investment that is a risk. Um, what you can do is use Convocation to get him out of bad situations. But uh, this is just like a little easy way to get him out and uh, some little extra buffs. Now he cannot use rings or amulets, that'd be awesome though. So how it works is you throw down all your stuff, make sure your anime guardian is, again, gonna be able to use the things, like he can do up to level 100. Um, and all you do is you right click on the item, it eats the item, but he will have the item and you can actually see him with all the items equipped. Although we have a bunch of minions. There, so there he is. Oh, it's, he's the one with the green staff, but that's how you uh, summon your anime guardian. Uh, if I remember, I'll put some extra stuff in the description box for like extra good items, but for starters and a beginner guide, this is like the basic of an anime guard and like the stuff that you'd actually want earlier on, but you can get much better stuff, which will be also in the uh, uh, pinned comment. And that's going to pretty much wrap it up for this part of the video. Keep in mind, there's so much more with Path of Exile, but it's just like I'm trying to feed it to you guys at a pace where you guys can actually consume it. But anyways, thanks for tuning in for part four of the endgame or part 14 of the entire walkthrough. But keep in mind, just keep on doing maps, get the currency, um, and then just sell the items that you don't need. And then eventually we're going to be talking about like the endgame bosses very soon. We're going to be talking about Maven um, doing like the different conquerors for Sirius, uh, Elder, Shaper. We're going to be doing all of that. We're going to get everything complete for this season for like uh, the new players uh, to keep up par with uh, all the new stuff with sentinel we'll talk more about uh, sentinel mechanic also very very soon but anyways take care guys and if you enjoyed the video drop a like on the way out i'll see you guys in the next one peace